and you are as well. And I believe you can do it. Girl. Thank you. Banks Entertainment in partnership with Comium presents Rising Stars Africa Season 4. Compete for the grand prize of $150,000 and become Comium's brand ambassador. Auditions are slated for May 25th, 2024. June 1st, June 8th, all happening at Baobab Hotel Bijelo at 9 a.m. Audition forms are available at all Comium branches and Cash Shop, Caraba Avenue, Star TV and GRTS. All audition forms are free. To participate or sponsor, please call 6661. 1644 or 648 Hello, good evening from our studio in Saraconda. This is Star TV News with me, Momodo Bailabare. Coming up tonight. Former Gambian Interior Minister Sonko sentenced to 20 years in prison, punished for crimes against humanity. Ministry of Communications kickstarts validation workshop on national digital ID addressing digital economy challenges. CDS Cham announces plans for GAF to start agriculture ventures, move towards self-sufficiency. Ministry of Health launches campaign to combat cytomyiasis, mass drug administration to be conducted on the international news. DR Congo cholera outbreak struggle to contain spread at camps in Goma. Nigeria inflation, food prices see 40% spike. Slovakia PM Prime Minister Robert Fico in critical but stable condition after being shot. This and many more in just a moment. To the news in details and many thanks for joining us. The former Gambian Interior Minister Usman Sonko has been sentenced to 20 years in prison by the Criminal Chamber of the Federal Criminal Court in Switzerland for crimes against humanity. The story, written by Maria Madem, is narrated by Awasane. Sonko, who fled to Switzerland in 2016 after being released from his position as Interior Minister in Gambia, was found guilty of intentional homicides act of torture and false imprisonment committed between 2000 and 2016. The court concluded that Sonko, a close confidant of former President Yahya Jame, was part of a group of penetrators that carried out a systematic attack against the civilian population in Gambia. The crimes included the intentional killing of soldiers suspected of a coup in 2000 torturing opposition members in 2016 and a false imprisonment of individuals in connection with failed coup attempts. While some charges relating to rape were abandoned, Sonko was sentenced to 20 years in prison, taking into account the time he has already served in detention. The court also ordered a 12 years judicial expulsion of Sonko from Switzerland and required him to pay compensation to the private clients for the pain and suffering they endure. The court's decision has not yet taken effect, but mark a significant step in holding a high-ranking state official accountable for crimes against humanity under universal jurisdiction. For Star TV News, I am Awasani. The Ministry of Communications and Digital Economy kicked off a two-day validation workshop on Thursday, focusing on the National Digital ID and Digital Transformation Strategy 2023-2028. Awasane has more in this report. Developed in partnership with the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, the strategy aims to empower citizens to fully participate in the digital economy through targeted initiatives and impactful investments. Minister of Communications and Digital Economy Usman Ba highlights the importance of the National Digital ID and Digital Transformation Strategy for the Gambia. The importance of digital transformation in the era cannot be overemphasized as it is necessary for our meaningful society economic development to take place. Digital technologies are serving as an engine of growth and providers to essential services, including support to e-government and growing digital economics. The digital transformation strategy we are validating today is not merely a document. It is represented to our commitment and enhancing power 
of digital technology for the benefit of all citizens. The identified digital transformation pillars are as the foundation of this strategy document us aligned with our development aspiration and sign in the recovery focus of our national development plan. The strategy also seeks to propel the nation's digital infrastructure and services into a new era of efficiency and inclusivity. Lamin Kamara is the permanent secretary at the Ministry of Communications and Digital Economy. We realize the digital ID is not something we can just jump on and get on with it. It's important that it's done in a structured manner and hence the development of strategy where everybody has an input and to ensure um, a good delivery of a digital ID system in the country. So in that regard, we want to thank UNECA for believing in us, for coming forward with the support uh, to get this digital ID in place. As uh, so you know now, we, the world is digital and we've been, transactions are done digitally. We have e-commerce, um, fintech transactions, and even um, our data, medical data and all those things that are digitalized. And eventually, to be able to authenticate who those. Unica's involvement in this digital quest underscores the regional significance of the strategy with potential implications for harmonizing digital transformation efforts across Africa. Maktar Sek, a representative of UNICA, stressed the need for other ministries to participate in the project for the benefit of all. Digital ID will help all entities at the government level. It's not a project for the Minister of Digital Economy the Minister of Foreign Affairs, the Minister of Security, the Minister of Public Service. All ministers have to be involved in this project. Because with this digital ID, we can combat this uh, fraud identity across the country. Also facilitate all the process admin, as well as we can reduce cost. Admin cost is very important. And facilitate also your easy, your, 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 your easy life a day because you, you don't need to have several. This collaborative effort is expected to ensure that the strategy aligns with national development goals and effectively addresses key challenges in the digital economy. For Star TV News, I am Awasane. During a visit to the second infantry battalion, Frogstrot Company in Lamenkoto Village, Chief of Defense Staff of the Gambia Armed Forces Series Mamad Ocham revealed plans for the Gambia Armed Forces to enter into agriculture with a significant portion of the budget allocated to feeding troops. The move towards self-sufficiency is seen as a strategic reason. Modu El Baji has more on this developing story. The Chief of Defense Staff of the Gambia Armed Forces and the accompanying delegation received an impressive quarter guard mounted by personnel of the 2nd Infantry Battalion, Fox Trucks Company, demonstrating the unit's allegiance to the High Command and Civil Authority. Chief of Defense Staff took to the podium to share his objective with the men and women in uniform, underscoring the Army's role in protecting the country's territorial integrity and the desire to venture into farming with the focus to deepen the Army's productivity in the area of agriculture. We engage the supply. We're going to buy for the agricultural project two brand new Massifagosian tractors. We're going to buy the plows that go with it and the trailers. And when that comes, we'll, we'll launch our project and start from there. I want you, if you have any skills in agriculture, when it comes, you volunteer so that together we can grow the rice that we are eating. Our budget, the biggest sum of money that they give us annually is called what is called food and food services. Annually, it used to be 90 million. Now, as we speak, the government is giving us 150 million for our feeding. 
if we are able to grow our rice, which takes about 40 to 50 percent of that 150 million, eh? how much can we save? And that money, what can we do with it? All big countries are doing it. China is able to develop and mediate its armed forces through agriculture. The talking we went to, all these military assets, the armed forces own the companies that are making them, including radio communication, including ABCs, and name it. If you go to even Burkina Faso here, the armed forces is producing the food that they are eating. So in peace time, apart from you know, patrols, it's the duty of an armed force to really embark on productive activities, which is also part of our constitutional mandate. So we'll do what it takes. But once we get this, it is over to you. You are the ones who are going to make sure that the vision is achieved. General Cham for the satellite on the hot pursue treaty with the Senegalese armed forces and the role of the economic mission in the Gambia. He emphasized that the economic mission operates with its own finances. The serious entourage wrap of activities in the Central River region with a courtesy call to the governor's office. Deputy Governor Senimbai hailed the role of Foxtro Company in maintaining peace and order in the area. He further stressed the need for the military to be provided with better mobility and improved accommodation facilities. Reporting from CRR, Ayamudu El Baji. The Ministry of Health has launched a campaign to combat pseudomyosis through mass drug administration in an effort to reduce the impact of this neglected tropical disease. The Epidemiology and Disease Control Program held a press briefing at the Central Medical Store Complex in Kotu, aiming to raise awareness and encourage participation in the initiative. My core attended the presser and he files in this report. The Epidemiology and Disease Control Unit under the Minister of Health is responsible for disease surveillance and responses, aiming to monitor diseases and events nationally to detect epidemic-prone diseases and coordinate rapid responses. According to health experts, health implications of cytomyasis, a parasitic disease caused by blood flux, are transmitted through contaminated water sources. The disease disproportionately affects communities in endemic regions, leading to chronic illness, organ damage, and even fertilities if left untreated. Focal passing neglected tropical diseases, Balajata, disclosed that the campaign's target 600,000 people for drug administration to combat cytomyasis. Ensuring that we reach every eligible individual with the necessary treatment. And this year, our, tar our target population is about 600,000 individuals that we want to treat with uh, this parasequantel. Parasequantel is a drug of choice to treat cystosomiasis, both if individual has it as a disease or a condition, or if you want to prevent the uh, disease. And then we are uh, our strategy includes setting up distribution points in schools, community centers, and other easily accessible locations to ensure broad coverage. We are going to target schools. We'll the campaign emphasizes community engagement and participation to achieve sustainable progress in fighting the disease. Africa Center for Disease Control National Coordinator in the Gambia, Dr. Pius Onegui, assured the general public about the safety of the drug to be administered. Very loud that these drugs are safe. These drugs have the capacity to reduce the burden of NTDs in our communities. This drug has the capacity of making our children, those population at risk, to work healthier than they wouldn't have done. And this drug has the capacity of freeing our communities from the very uh, negative burden of the neglected tropical disease, particularly schizosomiasis and the soil transmitted hemintiasis. World Health Organization Emergency Lead Dr. Ifeni Odewinji outlines the importance of conducting the campaign. We provide some funding to ensure that this MDA is conducted successfully in the Gambia. The importance of conducting this campaign cannot be overemphasized. Cystosomiasis remains a significant health challenge, particularly affecting children and adults who are at risk due to their environment and occupation. By administering these treatments, we want to protect our most vulnerable populations, prevent the spread of the disease, and ultimately eliminate 
its presence in our communities. The importance of preventive measures and drug administration was noted during the briefing, with the goal to reduce the disease boarding and improving public health outcomes. Program Coordinator of Epidemiology and Disease Control at the Ministry of Health, Amadou Wurijalo, speaking on behalf of the Director of Health Services, said the mass drug administration is a crucial step towards mitigating the impact of disease. So this mass drug administration is a crucial step the impact of uh, disease and is aligned with the targets set by the Global Neglected Tropical Diseases Roadmap 2021 to 2030, which aims to achieve the elimination as a public health problem for cystosomiasis by 2030. So our strategy, as already mentioned, involves a comprehensive approach to reach and treat every eligible individual within the specified age groups of one, preschool age children, school age children, and at risk adults. Meanwhile, the disease control and epidemiology research aims to understand and combat infectious diseases. It involves studying the transmission, spread, and impact of disease, as well as developing strategies for prevention, control, and treatment. Reporting for Star TV News. I am Baiko. And that report by Mbaiko will take us to a break. When we come back, we look at news beyond our borders. And you are as well. And I believe you can do it. Girl. Thank you. Banks Entertainment in partnership with Comium presents Rising Stars Africa Season 4. Compete for the grand prize of $150,000 and become Comium's brand ambassador. Auditions are slated for May 25th, 2024. June 1st, June 8th, all happening at Baobab Hotel Bijelo at 9 a.m. Audition forms are available at all Comium branches and Cash Shop, Caraba Avenue, Star TV and GRTS. All audition forms are free. To participate or sponsor, please call 6661. One six four four or six four eight eight seven zero three. Welcome back after that short commercial break. If you are just tuning in, this is Star TV News. We are broadcasting from our studio in Saraconda. We now take a look at news outside the Gambia. More than 2.5 million people have been forced from their homes in the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo by conflict between government forces and M23 rebels. The displaced are living in uncertainty camps in North Kiefs, provincial capital Goma, where people are suffering an outbreak of cholera. Al Jazeera's Katrin Soy reports. These health workers are struggling to contain a cholera outbreak in camps for displaced people in Goma. The disease is spreading quickly. 13,000 people have been infected since January. This treatment center is filling up. Cholera is highly contagious and can kill within days. My child started vomiting. That was followed by diarrhea. She was very weak. When we arrived here, doctors discovered it was cholera. She's getting better. A conflict between government forces and the M23 rebel group has made things worse. More than 2.5 million people have been forced from their homes. In the last two and a half years, many are living rough in shelters like this. They have very little to eat and their living conditions are unsanitary. Cholera cases are growing every day in all the camps. Each week we get 500 reported cases. The security situation is not helping. The World Health Organization and other medical health agencies say they're running out of funds to help millions of people in the country. Uh, we have people who have almost nothing because they've been displaced, because they've been forced to flee uh, their uh, villages, their homes, with nothing but the clothes on their backs. Um, we were up the hill where the most new arrivals are, uh, and we saw people who literally are coming uh, with nothing, living in a sheet of plastic. Uh, trying to make ends meet, finding uh, their dinner tonight. And what is needed is financial support. This is what recently happened in two camps 10 kilometers west of Goma. More than 30 people were killed when bombs hit their shelters. 
Rwanda denies accusations by the government, the UN, the US, that it's funding M23. Back at the camp, displaced people say their priority is keeping their families safe. Because even in what are meant to be secure areas like this, their protection isn't guaranteed. Catherine Soy, Al Jazeera. Nigeria is due to release its inflation figures for April. They are expected to show a 40% rise in food prices. Africa's most populous nation has suffered violent unrest over food price increases in recent months, including attacks on grain warehouses. Insecurity, a weak local currency, and high energy costs are blamed for the price increase. Al Jazeera's Ahmed Idris reports from Lagos. Trading at the Ketu food market has taken a hit. Like many other markets across Nigeria, few customers come to buy these days. When they do, the amount they purchase is significantly lower than before. We used to eat four meals a day. Now it's hard to eat twice a day as food has become so expensive. In March and April, food inflation rose to its highest level in nearly three decades as the local currency came under intense pressure. The Naira depreciated by 280 percent. The loss of the local currency's value has made foodstuff more expensive for Nigerians. But the country's neighbors have seized the opportunity to raid local markets where they can buy grains for cheap. This has prompted government to intervene. Security personnel have raided warehouses across the country where traders are suspected to be holding food items, something officials say has helped ease prices. We will not allow anybody to undermine the food security of this nation. Farmers say the high cost of seeds, fertilizer and agricultural machinery are also responsible for low production and higher food prices. Insecurity caused by criminal gangs and also Boko Haram in the northern region has also driven many people from their homes and farms. Nigeria's government says its military operations is now turning the tide. A lot of communities are getting back to their lives. Uh, it's a very impressive uh, program of returning uh, the refugees and those who ran away and escaped back to their own domain. The government is also clamping down on what officials call illegal, unregulated crypto trade and currency speculators. But not everyone agrees with its methods. And some analysts argue subsidizing agriculture and ending insecurity would be the best way to address food shortages and inflation in Africa's most populous country. Ahmed Idris, Al Jazeera, Lagos, Nigeria. Finally now, Slovakia's Prime Minister Robert Fico is stable, but his condition remains very serious. His deputy has said, after an assassination attempt that shocked the country and drew global condemnation, Fico, 59, was shot five times in the central town of Hanlova on Wednesday. He was in a critical condition and underwent several hours of emergency surgery. Slovakian police have charged a man with the attempted murder of Slovakia's Prime Minister. A dangerous Natasha border report from the central Slovakia. This was the moment shots were fired at Slovakia's Prime Minister Robert Fitzo. Within moments, the suspected shooter is wrestled to the ground. This eyewitness said the gunshots sounded like firecrackers. I saw blood on his head and then he fell next to the barrier. I think this is a nightmare that I will not wake up from. This should not happen in Slovakia. The Prime Minister was bundled into a vehicle and later airlifted to a specialist facility in this hospital in the central Slovak town of Banska Bistrisa, where he underwent an operation that lasted hours. Doctors at this hospital worked into the night to save Fitzo's life and say that he's now in a stable but serious condition. The surgical patient had multiple gunshot wounds, which will affect his recovery. At this point, his condition has stabilized, but it is truly very serious, and therefore he will remain in the intensive care unit in hospital, where he will be cared for by the team. Fidso had been attending a government meeting in the town of Handlova, northeast of the capital, Bratislava, before he was shot. The Slovak president said the country was in shock. A physical attack on the Prime Minister is, first of all, an attack on a person, but it is also an attack on democracy. Hateful rhetoric, which we see in society, leads to hateful actions. Please stop it. 
Fidso is Slovakia's longest serving political leader and ally of the Russian President Vladimir Putin. A populist, he was re-elected in October after promising to end military support for Ukraine. He's since launched a crackdown on the country's media. His government says the attack was politically motivated. Police have yet to disclose the motives of the 71-year-old suspect, but it's clear the attempted assassination could destabilize an already politically polarized country. Natasha Butler, Al Jazeera, Central Slovakia. The report from Natasha Butler brings us to the end of this edition of News Bulletin. But before we go, we look at the main points again. Former Gambian Interior Minister Sonko sentenced to 20 years in prison, punished for crimes against humanity. Ministry of Communications kickstarts validation workshop on national digital ID addressing digital economy challenges. CDS Cham announces plans for GAF to start agriculture ventures, move towards self-sufficiency. Ministry of Health launches campaign to combat cytomyiasis, mass drug administration to be conducted on the international news. DR Congo cholera outbreak struggle to contain spread at camps in Goma. Nigeria inflation, food prices see 40% spike. Slovakia PM Prime Minister Robert Fico in critical but stable condition after being shot. And that's it for this edition of today's news. Thank you very much for watching. Do stay tuned and enjoy the rest of our programs. Until then, have a wonderful night.